These are duck eggs. They are my favorite kind of egg. The thing about ducks is that they don't lay them in a nest. They kind of just lay them out everywhere. But they're hard as rocks. They're really, really hard to get the, the shell to crack. And they are just wonderful. They are my favorite egg. And we're really lucky because the, the younger ducks just barely started laying just as we're going into winter. Just as the chickens are stopping laying. This is duck grease. It is what I drain off when we cook duck or goose. Um, and I just, you just pour it off because it takes a long time to cook duck and goose. They're quite greasy. And in France, this is a delicacy. They put it in jars for the winter and save it. And one of the best things to cook in it is fried potatoes. And I can't describe to you the smell, uh, but it doesn't smell like lard, it doesn't smell like tallow, it doesn't smell like butter. It smells like, a little bit like honey. And just, I put a little bit of salt on it and, and um, that is how you use duck grease, duck oil, duck fat, whatever you want to call it, duck. This has been in the fridge since last October or November when I butchered our last um, young ducks and geese. And it just keeps, I just keep a lid on it and scoop some out when I need it and use it for frying. Here's my duck feet. And you just do them the same way. You just dip them and then skin them. I don't think that I, I don't actually think that I skinned these ones. These little guys were found by my brother in the uh, dry beds, the river, that are kind of up next to our house when he went inner tubing. This is the little chick, what the last little chick that actually made it from the mom that didn't like black chicks. And he has been so lonely. So when we put these little ducklings in here, he got a lot happier. Aren't they tiny and cute? They, these ducklings actually followed my brother and his friends on their inner tube down the river. I think what happened was the mom saw my brother coming and she swam away with the other babies and these ones just couldn't keep up so they actually thought that the inner tubes were a mama. So they're good company for this other little chick. And this, when I feed ducklings, I give them the regular food for the chicks, but I also give them rabbit pellets because they need green food. So in the greenhouse, it stays nice and warm for them, but on the floor, it keeps them from being too warm. These are the ducks and geese. As you can see, they're out eating the new growth of weeds on the, on the driveway. We raise blue Swedish ducks. <clears throat> and what they're really good at is eating slugs in mulch. They'll, instead of chickens, where chickens will scratch up your mulch, chickens will just stick their little head in and move it around just a tiny bit and find the slugs where they are without disturbing the mulch. So rather than having to replace mulch everywhere that they've been, it just stays there. But the geese, they love to eat grass, so they're especially good for weeding in like a strawberry patch. Um, these ones are African Toulouse mix. Our last batch were white Chinese, and the white Chinese I think were a little more friendly. But we had them, we raised them in the house because it was still too cold from outside, so that probably has something to do with it. Our mama duck, all but one of these babies is adopted. This little mama duck will adopt just about anything that has a quack or any kind of waterfowl squeak. She is amazing, and she sat her own eggs. But we had a fox get in, so we ended up replacing, adding seven more ducks, and we had to replace our geese as well because of a fox. I just needed to do a better job keeping them put up. She will take them into the backyard every night to keep them safe. She just herds everybody in and waits for me to open the door. We haven't eaten our duck yet. We, they do give wonderful eggs in the spring and summer. They're big and beautiful. Oh, somebody got lost. Go to mama. Go quick. Fast, fast. There we go. Mama, you left me. 
So um, anyway, we keep them for slug eaters and weed eaters, and we love them. And um, that's our little duck. And Ducks do not set all the time the way that chickens do. Once a chicken starts to set and she has all the eggs she wants, she'll just continue to set. It's not how it works with ducks. I mean, you can see that there's snow out on the ground. So it's actually not that cold right now. It's only about 35 or 40 degrees. Um, she doesn't have to sit on them. If the temperature is not actually freezing, she can go wander around for long periods of time. And she will do that. It's only about the last two weeks that she will sit all the time. She'll get it for tiny little drinks and tiny little bits of water and um, to go to the bathroom. But it's only that last little bit that she sits all the time. The rest of the time she, she just gets up and eats and moves around. They just don't have any of the same uh, brooding habits that chickens do. And again, I already told you once, but the head pumping, they're not doing it right now. Head pumping, head bobbing up and down, both of them at the same time. There, she just did it. But they, they do it very quickly, both of them. And that means that they're a breeding pair. She's talking to him, he's talking to her. And generally they need a pool in order to be able to breed. Um, it's possible without a pool, it's just more difficult. You'll have more, more uh, fudgy eggs, eggs that didn't keep. I keep this close to her and I give her food in here, but she wants to go wander around. She doesn't want to stay in one spot. So when she's not on them, she covers her eggs and they are green. I had chickens that had eggs in here and I took them out. Um, so she just covers them up. I made sure to put in more hay, more straw for her so that she could cover them. There wasn't enough in here before. And um, once she starts to set for, for real and she's real serious about it and her incubation period is coming to an end, I'm going to take the dog fence and put it around the coop because I do not want the dad to have access to the, to the ducklings. I've had dad, I've had drakes eat ducklings before and then I will also take this water away and I will give her, um, I will give her feed inside the dog kennel and water inside the dog kennel and that way she doesn't need to get up and move around and if you don't do that what will happen is the first ones will hatch and she'll take them to go get food and water and she may or may not come back to sit on the rest so I once I see that she's getting close I will cage her in um, until I actually see babies I will leave this water for her to bathe in but I lose more ducklings to drowning than anything else so if I do leave her any water, I will make sure that it is very, very shallow. And um, I would probably put some rocks in there so that if the babies do get in, they can climb back out. Okay, what are we making? Um, a ram. For what? For the ducklings because they just got hatched out. What are you doing, Kaya? What? Gathering rock. Okay, and this is our peach tree, and it just was um, planted, so it's a good spot to have a little extra water oh, and manure. Rocks. So it's important that they can get out. It's not quite as important that they can get in, because at least if they can't get in, they won't drown. But if they're in and they can't get out, then they'll drown. Not there, honey. Down on the side. No, you're going to knock the rest of the ramp down. Put it down on the side. Okay, I'll help you fix it. Okay, so I have a problem right now of the ducks getting into the baby ducks. Those baby ducks getting into the little tiny chicks water. The chicks are small enough. I want them to know that this water is available all the time. Because the water that I have for the ducks is deep enough for a chick to drown in. So... This is bigger than the little ones that screw in mason jars, and I like it better. It lasts longer. It stays cooler. So I just took some fencing. The ducks won't be able to get their heads through and reach it, but the chicks can just walk through, and the chickens can't get to it either. I've thrown one mama chicken, well, two now, I guess, two mama chickens over to the other side. Babies can still get in. I have one mama chicken left back here, and the chicks will come to get water where they know to get water. And again, the ducks have their little 
their little splashy pond that they can get into. And I don't want the chicks to be thirsty enough to go to that space, so. Okay, so once again, if any of you ever come out to my house and you're like, wow, you have so many chicken runs and so many little sheds dotted everywhere here and hither and thither. Yes, I do. The reason that I do that is because anytime any of the animals have babies, they want to be separate from everybody else. And depending on the time of year, I could have as many as six animals sitting on nests. And so the animals that are not their mother will try to kill the babies, particularly the ducks. Um, just like if I had hens next to ducks, the hens would try to kill the ducklings. Well, if the ducks are next to the hens, they'll try to kill the chicks. And I have one, two, three hens right now that are broody. I have to keep the ducks in the front pasture because if I have them in the back pasture, they will uh, bathe in the goats drinking water and then the goats won't drink it and then the goats get dehydrated and they die. So this is on the west side of our house and we have almost no space between our, our neighbor's property and our house, but can you see the ducks in there? That is our, our snow fence because otherwise we get eight foot drifts in our backyard during the winter. So that's a permanent snow fence. There's the ducks, there's lots of grass. And over here with the Nanking cherry, there is lots of shade. So they'll have grass to eat and shade. Here's their pool. They need a pool in order to be able to breed. And I'm gonna bring their dog kennel back here so that I can um, get them in it at night. So they'll be safe from foxes and such. This is the time of year when everything whiskery and feathery is having babies. And when foxes are having babies, they get really hungry. So this is the time of year that I lose a lot of ducklings and chickens. Um, so anyway, there we go. Um, it's They can fly a little bit, so I have it raised just a bit so they can't fly over the top. And... I will have to be really careful not to ever leave this spot when I have the hose going because otherwise I will flood out my basement. I think I've shown you guys before my watering setup. Um, I have this hose that runs about, I don't know, 25, 30 yards into our backyard where we actually have a water uh, pump. And um, it looks bad right now because they have drunk it. I have to come out and fill this twice a day, but I do it from the backyard because I have the hose station in the bucket. So this fills, the big one fills, and anytime you have something deep and you have free range animals that are short, what you need to do is have a smaller one next to it so that they will drink out of the small one rather than climbing up on this. If you have chicks that are thirsty, they will jump up on this and try to get a drink out of that big bucket. Well, if the bucket isn't at the very, very top full, the chicks will fall in and they'll drown. So anywhere that I have a full big one, I have a short, shallow one. And this one, when the big one is full, it just overflows into the little one. So any of you that have free range chickens next to bigger animals, um, if, I hope that's helpful. Okay, I wanted to talk about ducks in the garden today. Um, so the ducks don't dig things up, they just use their little beaks and poke around. But what they will do is they will eat the roots of your small perennials. They can't really get to the roots of your big perennials like your fruit trees. But for things like grapes that are just starting out, if they have a new shoot coming up from the root, say, they will eat that shoot and they will eat that root. So I found that out the hard way. I had one of those cherries from Honeyberry that had died back and was coming back up from the roots. And first things the ducks did when they saw that I'd been over there watering and messing with it was they went over and they ate the shoots, the new shoots it was sending up from the root and they ate the roots. They love those fine little roots. <laughs> How frustrating is that? And um, so as far as uh, green plants, the ducks prefer green plants more than the chickens do. And so with my cages, it has to, has to, has to have this on it, the bird netting, or else they'll just stick their heads through and eat everything on the inside. Here's the ducks. We have lost four ducks in the last week and a half. Um, we lost one Khaki Campbell yesterday and two of the Pekins 
yesterday and then before that we'd lost one so last night I did a trial to see what exactly was getting our chicken our ducks and the way that I run that trial is that I put them in something without a door that has a a wire top like or like bird netting on the top if nothing happens to the ducks that way if nothing happens to the ducks that way it means that what's getting them is an owl I'm going to just wring that rooster's neck um, because what was happening was that the khaki camel was killed but it wasn't taken away so that means that it was too big too heavy for whatever killed it but my little pecans were taken which means that they would be small enough that whatever took them killed them was able to fly away with them if I had put them in something with a door and without a door but it had a lid and they were still gone in the morning it meant a fox because a fox could just walk in the door whereas an owl the way that they kill is they hit them from above and it's like a, con a, con concuss a concussive blow that kills them it's the weight of the owl falling on them and so um, we have this problem every year um, I lose a lot of chicks to half-grown chicks to owls it's why I'll come and I'll have this poof. See this poof of feathers? It means something got hit by an owl. So last night I went and took my chickens and refrained from allowing them to be free range. So now they are stuck in here so that I can protect them. And I have my roosters out in their shelter so that I can butcher them. And this guy is in the wrong cage. And I'm, ah, uh, he just makes me mad. They're all beaten up on my little black banty. Um, so that's what's going on with the ducks. I have three khaki campbells and three pekins left. We're not sure if we want to keep the khaki campbells for laying eggs because I'm, I don't remember when they start laying or if we just want to butcher them. It is inconvenient to have two kinds of poultry that have such different needs. The chickens need no water, the ducks need water, the, the ducks are messy, the chickens stir up my mulch so it's always kind of an interesting decision he is so stinking mean I just want to reach through and grab him but if I get in there I'm gonna to have to fight with everybody else not getting out in order to grab him darn him this is the part that I love to watch so I give them water to fill up their swimming pool and they'll get in and they'll dive and they'll splash and they'll talk and while they're doing that all the water goes to water whatever I want watered really well right now and then the mulch retains that water and the mulch also retains the duck poop so that it's not getting on our shoes it's just the perfect system I would not keep ducks if I did not have deep mulch to absorb their manure which is very slimy and stinky and messy I will let the water run until it's clear and then I'll turn it off. I have their grain at the base and what they they don't like to eat unless they have lots of water nearby. They they really need water to be able to get the grain to go down their throat or whatever else they're eating. They really need to be able to wash it down with a lot of water. Right now we have three khaki campbell ducks, um, one black Swedish duck and two uh, mallard mix ducks. Kitty, you are silly. Um, and then we have one black Swedish drake and two uh, half mallard drakes. What do you think you're doing? Hey, Tina.